In your time as a politician, um, looking back on that, is there something that you wish you had done differently? Oh, totally. Um, I think the biggest mistake I made was not admitting that I needed help. Um, I'm the first to put my hand up and say, to say that I didn't think that I could go to anyone to say, look, I'm not really coping today. I'm not really you know, sure about what I'm doing. But more importantly, I'm having a really bad day and I need to download to someone. And... I reckon if I had done that, if I'd been able to do that with some confidence, then I would have been a much better politician. I certainly would have had less stress, you know, mental stress. But because I was the first female leader of a political party in New South Wales, there were no other female political leaders around I could go to. And there weren't even a lot of senior women in organisations that I could go to. But I absolutely believe that was my biggest failing. Because if I'd been able to put my hand up and say, what can I do better? how do I cope with this, and had people I could go to and have those conversations with, I would have been a much better politician. I may, even ma I may have even made Premier. <laughs> Wishful thinking on my part. Who have your role models been? Um, certainly, in the very first instance, um, my parents, and I know everybody says that, but you need to understand that um, I'm the eldest of four girls. So, in my house, there was never anything which said, boys did this, girls did this. My parents genuinely believed girls could do you know, whatever they chose to. So my parents weren't surprised that I wanted to be a politician. My father encouraged that ambition much more so than my mother, I need to say. Um, but then the nuns that I that taught me at Monty, I said I came back at 13 and they said to me, I said to them I was going to be a politician and they said to me, go for it. And in fact, the funniest thing in all the world was that when I became a politician, I know that it was probably against their political grain because I'm sure they voted the other way most of the time, but they would come and hand out how to vote for me. So they were hugely supportive. And I think further on, later on in life, I've got to be, you know, I've got to give credit where credit's due. John Howard was actually someone who I looked to and admired and, you know, occasionally would pick up the phone too.